Welcome back to the virtual hangar. Today we are making pet portraits. Your kit will include one half sheet of tracing paper, one four by six ish piece of art paper, one brush pen, one oil pastel, probably in a different color, and one artboard and photo mat uh, with a little bag. You will also need a pencil and some kind of printed photo of your pet. It doesn't have to be a pet. You can do your house, you can do your pal, whatever. You just need to make sure that when you print out the photo that it fits within the art paper. Um, so even if you're using a photo on real photo paper, I just did this in Word uh, and printed it on regular copy paper. You just wanna make sure that the size of your photo is about the size where it will fit within the mat and on the photo paper. So we're gonna start by taking our tracing paper and laying it over our photo. I am gonna secure it with a little piece of tape. Um, I recommend that if you've never used tracing paper before. Um, it's important we don't shift and we're just gonna look through the tracing paper and with our pencil trace anywhere that the color has a significant change. So uh, your technique may be a little bit different depending on if you decide not to do a pet, you wanna do a person or something, um, but I think for pets, it's it works to make the art kind of funny because pets are always kind of funny looking anyways. Um, so I'm just using my pencil to make a line anywhere there is a dramatic change in the photo underneath. So when the eye, the edge of the eye is black versus his white face, um, I make a line along that. And don't beat yourself up. Oh, I don't know how to draw. I've never drawn. Um, this is a super forgiving technique. And even if your lines aren't, you know, the most confident, I think that they all turn out incredible to look at. So just um, take your time, don't sweat it too much. Um, you kind of want to be free and breezy with this and that's what makes it fun, right? Um, so just try and trace around all of the edges of the color um, with your pencil as you do that. Um, you know, it, don't worry too much at this point if you're like, actually, I don't like that line. Um, we're gonna do another step that kind of refines this. Um, but just kind of, we are getting the impression of the most defining characteristics of whatever subject you're trying to draw. So we do that by um, paying attention just to where the colors change. There's my finished beagle. Um, carefully peel off your piece of tape. Now on the back side of your photo, if you just use paper, um, you just wanna protect the surface that you're working on. We are going to kind of make this tracing technique a little bit more refined um, by flipping it over on the back and giving it another trace with our pencil. This lets us kind of um, go over our lines with a little more confidence, make more like intentional decisions about the lines that we're drawing. Um, at this point, when you're tracing, you may like look at just the part where you're literal, literally where your pencil is, right? At this stage, we wanna kind of zoom out and look at the whole thing and say, does this line make sense here? Should I add a line here? Would it make a little more sense if this was a little curvier, that was a little straighter? Or um, you saw I added that line in the forehead that I probably should have gotten, but I know that my beagle always has a crease there, so I should put a line. Um, this is the thing that kind of elevates it above just like regular tracing. And then when we get to the next step, this is also crucial um, so that when we go over it, our the final piece will be facing the same way as our original photo. Um, I do hear a lot of poo-pooing about tracing. I think it's a really important artistic skill. Yes, I said skill. Um, it gets shapes into your hands and will improve your drawing technique overall. So I don't wanna hear it about anybody. All right, so we're gonna flip our tracing paper back over once we've gone through our second set of lines. You should pretty much, it should look more or less like the photo, right? And very carefully without moving the tracing paper on the art paper at all, we are just gonna rub over the entire thing with our pencil. Everywhere that you push is gonna give that impression of the graphite that we did on the second pass of lines. Um, use a little movie magic here so we go a little faster. If you don't have a line somewhere, you don't have to scribble over it, but um, scribbling over it pushes those lines into the art paper. Um, once you've got that done, I go ahead and take some time and clean my uh, table here so that it's nice and clean. We are now ready to line this. 
um, we are going to take our brush pen and again, if you're not confident with a brush pen, this is a perfectly forgiving chance to try. Um, I liked to go on the inside lines. I used a little bit less pressure and um, did thinner lines. And then on the outline, I did a little bit uh, thicker lines. I pushed harder on the pen. Um, I would encourage you to just kind of let it flow, take a deep breath and relax, and use the kind of organic shapes that you get in the line with the different thicknesses just by virtue of holding the pen and following the lines that you've already drawn. Um, so don't sweat too much about like, oh, I want this one to have this thickness or that one to have light thickness. Don't sweat it. Um, you are just going to kind of follow and fill in the lines that you drew with the pencil. We're just covering them all with our brush pen to keep them permanent um, and really make this uh, art a piece of art, right? So once we are almost done doing all of those lines, um, now I will say also, please be careful because if there's no erasing the pen, right? <laughs> but hopefully by now you should, this will be your third time drawing it, right? So it'll be a little bit easier to be confident. All right, so there's my finished lines. I'm gonna go ahead and take an eraser and give it a good strong erase after I let it dry for just a second in the air. Um, make sure your table is really clean before we get the pastel out. Um, just take a look at putting the mat over your art and kind of decide where you are gonna tape it ahead of time to make this kind of abstract shape. Um, I don't want to, You, of course you are free to, but I didn't want to fill in the entire background. Um, I just give kind of like an eighth of an inch of a halo around the line art we just did. Um, and I go around and just follow the outline. It kind of, I don't know, it acts like a little bit of a barrier so that it, it kind of defines the subject, which is just black and white from this background, which is really colorful and dynamic by just being kind of an abstract shape. Um, so just really carefully with the tip or the corner or whatever um, of your pastel, just go around the outline. Uh, these pastels, um, may be bigger or smaller than the one that I'm using in the video, or maybe the outside is just kind of dirty. Um, you can just wipe it on a fresh piece of paper or a tissue until it's the color of the inside of the pastel. You know, if it's not clean, clean it off on a piece of paper. Um, once I have that eighth of an inch halo, I'm just going to draw kind of a funky rectangle. I'm not going to be too worried about it. And I'm going to use the side of my pastel to fill the rest of that in. Um, just give it a cool kind of, it's almost like 90s Hey Arnold with just like a random shape. That's like, it's like jazz. You're just doing whatever. As you can see, pastel is pretty messy. So um, give this a good tap on your table and put your art up somewhere else while you clean it off. Um, you want to get rid of as much of the dust as you can and then wash your hands. So I wash the table, I wash my hands. And then we are going to put the mat. So I don't want to touch the pastel as much as I can. Um, I'm going to take four little pieces of scotch tape and put them sticky side up right on the back of the mat. So I don't want to flip this over and put the pastel down on the table because that'll smear it. Smear it? Um, we're just going to put a piece of tape on all four sides, um, sticking out maybe like an eighth or a quarter of an inch so that it doesn't come off the edge of the mat. And then when you have that all framed the way you'd like it, give it a good firm press all the way around on the black edge. And then this is all ready to go in your frame or your bag that it comes with. Um, if you want to give it as a gift, you back it with that other piece of cardboard, cardstock, chipboard, I don't know, that come, came with the kit. Um, and it comes with this little bag. If you do that and you do put this piece of art in the bag, just pay attention to the front lip. You don't want it to catch on the pastel and smear it into the black and white. I think that contrast is what makes this a really cool piece. Um, but there it is. I hope that you love doing this project. I had a great time and uh, I made probably like a hundred of these. I had a super fun time doing it. If you need any help, if you have any questions, you are totally free to come on into the hangar um, and we can try other stuff. I would love to see what you make. Please reach out on social media and I will see you next time.